In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. And welcome on this last day of January, this snowy Sunday, this uh, unusual place to be having our, our Zoom Mass. We are all in the chapel of the Jesuit residence, Ignatius House. So welcome. Welcome, my Jesuit brothers who are praying with you. And I'm offering this Mass for Father Jack's mother, Mary Helen, celebrating her birthday tomorrow. And I'd like to really pray for her in a special way. And there's this beautiful, beautiful part of the Proverbs, the very last chapter of Proverbs, which is entitled, The Valiant Woman. And I'd like to just read a tiny little excerpt from it because this epitomizes Mary Helen Dennis. The Valiant Woman sets about her work vigorously her arms are strong for her tasks. When it snows, she has no fear for her household. Her husband, wonderful, wonderful Dr. John Dennis, is respected. The man he was as a medical doctor, as a dean, as a father, as a grandfather, as a friend. He takes rest and prays for her in a special place. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. As we pray today and pray in a special way for those who really struggle when the snow hits in the quarantine and the isolation, let us take our prayer to our God. And let us ask for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads us back to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth that enlightens all peoples. Christ, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the life that renews the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on Amen. earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, your Holy One, Jesus of Nazareth, spoke the truth with authority, and you confirmed his teaching by wondrous deeds. Through his healing presence, drive far from us all that is unholy, so that by word and deed, we may proclaim him Messiah and Lord, and bear witness to your power to heal and save. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you re requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name 
an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I'm telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. <laughs> alleluia, alleluia. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light on those dwelling in a land overshadowed by death. Light has arisen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, why have you to do with this, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him and all were amazed and asked one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit, COVID-19. And he asked, what do you have to do with this? And we know the answer that Jesus has everything to do with expelling this demon. And recently, I was surprised to see a, an editorial, an op-ed page in the New York Times written by Pope Francis. It's an excerpt from his book, Let Us Dream. And he writes from the very beginning in the book, in this past year of change, my mind and heart have overflowed with people. People I think of and pray for, sometimes cry with. People with names, faces, people who died without saying goodbye to those they loved. Families in difficulty. There's so much suffering and need. 
And isn't that our own experience? All those people that we bring to our prayer to the heart of Christ. And then he shares something very powerful that I think is a clue, a kind of a secret to understanding Pope Francis's incredible gift for empathy and for identifying with the healing Christ. And he writes, when I got really sick at the age of 21, I had my first experience of limitation and deep, deep loneliness. It changed my life. And for those moments, I didn't know whether or not I would live or die. And I remember hugging my mother and saying, just tell me, tell me if I'm going to die. And I remember to this very day, August 13th, 1957, I was taken to the hospital by my seminary prefect who realized that I didn't have the kind of flu that could be treated with aspirin. I had COVID-like symptoms and they were giving me liters of water and at that point had to take out the upper right lobe of my lung and put me on a ventilator and pretty much gave me up for death. But then a Dominican sister, a nurse who had been transferred to Buenos Aires from Athens, remembers it so clearly from that day, came in and disregarded what the doctor had said about making him comfortable for his death. And she took the penicillin and trimexacin and gave him double doses and told, told me, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna live. And the rest is history. And I think in so many ways, our faith depends so much on nurses and doctors and those who surround us these days, who are our healers, our friends, our family. And when we hear this terribly challenging gospel of an unclean spirit, we must turn to Christ who rebukes that spirit, that spirit of anxiety, of negativity, of indifference, of hopelessness. And the Holy Father is, again, from that secret of his own empathy, has said over and over again of one of the greatest prayers we can offer is the prayer of weeping, especially to pray for those who are isolated and quarantined and the elderly and people we know maybe even be watching our liturgy this, this morning to pray to the Lord who cried his own tears so many times and on this very day is crying with us and pulling for us and hoping that we hear what he said to come out of that unclean spirit. Back in the 1970s, there's a doctor who lives in Baltimore, Dr. John Lynch, a devout Catholic, and he was in his uh, residency at Hopkins and was working on learning a little bit more about hypertension and hypertension medicine. And by accident in his, his uh, experiments, he started to notice, again, this is years and years ago, the powerful effect that humans had on animals being treated for hypertension and dogs in particular. And he noticed as he conducted these experiments that every time someone would pet a dog, the dog's blood pressure would literally drop 5%. And he began to do these experiments with animals, with touching and feeling and healing. And he noticed the connection between that and really the whole, whole challenge these days of loneliness. The consequence of loneliness is the name of that very first book that he would write. He would spend the rest of his life at Hopkins researching the relationship between stress and loneliness. And you can't help but think these days of how much our hearts, our souls and our bodies are affected. But interestingly enough, in that book and in all the books he wrote after that, he always included scripture. And he has a great line in that first book, and the word became flesh and dwelt within us and dwelt among us. And he was able to make that connection that Christ 
the incarnate God is part of our life, of our hearts, his sacred heart. And I think when we look at that second reading from Paul, trying to make the connection of Moses listening and hearing if today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. And that invitation today from the Psalm from Moses, inviting us to listen to God, and then the Lord expelling all that's unclean within us. But that second reading about uh, husbands and wives is a little challenging for me to connect the other two. And this is the part where I hope I don't cry. But I, I read, you know, we've all seen these stories on CNN and other places about people who have died of COVID, life's well lived. And we've seen these stories of couples, married couples who have lived 50, 60, 70 years together and how for some reason they both been hospitalized at the same time. And I came across this story from a, a town not too far from where I grew up in Ohio. Dick and Shirley Meek celebrated their anniversary on December 22nd. It was then when they innocuously told their children they were feeling a little under the weather. They said to us kids, we think we're getting cold, said Kelly, their daughter. But suddenly things got bad and it was evident that this was no mere cold. On January 8th, they both tested positive for COVID-19. When things started to worsen for both of them, the family asked for them to be together uh, for their final moments. Hospital staff found a room for two beds and the necessary equipment. Dick and Shirley died in each other's arms on January 16th. They were holding hands and mom's head was on dad's shoulder. The way our hearts break in the way in which the sacred heart of Jesus welcomes us in hopes that when our hearts break, it breaks open in trust and love. It breaks open in a way that we can receive his powerful and healing love. And the Pope ends with a little bit of a challenge about when this is over, this crisis, which he calls the crisis of the heart. And he says, if we are to come out of this crisis less selfish than when we went in, we have to let ourselves be touched by others' pain. This is a big moment for us. We could go either way in the year to come closer to Christ, closer to the vulnerable, closer to those who cry out for us or the other way. So it's a time to rethink our priorities, a time to reimagine the way in which we live. And it's a time to acknowledge all those this year that really have opened up their hearts and all the people that we pray for today all the doctors and nurses, EMT, all the people that have put their hearts and souls and bodies on the line. And I pray that at the end of this journey, the shared destination on these days, and ultimately when we meet our sacred heart, that we can say at the end of the sacred heart, Jesus will say to us, how have you lived and how have you loved and you'll be able to say and open your heart filled with hundreds and hundreds of names. We will profess our faith and the style of the response we do believe. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? We do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin, Mary, crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? We do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? 
And we do believe. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us bring our, our petitions and our prayers to our, our loving God. Let us pray for the world. For those who serve in government in this new administration. For the wisdom, dedication, and integrity to make decisions that protect the most vulnerable without attention to personal gain. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the work of the church. For all those who minister to God's people, for all efforts to affirm and protect the lives of the most vulnerable, the very old and the very young, for those yet to be born, for prisoners, refugees, those suffering poverty, and all those whose voices are not heard. We pray. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our local communities. May we come together in service to support those in need. For those who work in food pantries, jobs programs, homeless shelters, and tutoring programs. We pray for all those who are unemployed, struggling to find a job, pay bills, and provide for their families. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our loyal community. As we settle into this new normal, we pray for a spirit of cooperation and unity in maintaining a safe and healthy campus. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for healthcare workers and all those on the front lines battling the pandemic. For the sick, for those with terminal illnesses, for those who mourn, and for all those who have died this week, especially Devonta Williams. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us to be generous. Teach us to serve you as you deserve to give and not to count the cost to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labor and not to seek for rest to toil, to seek for no reward save that of doing your will, embracing your heart and serving you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, which earth has given human hands have made. It'll become for us our spiritual food and drink. Blessed be God the prayer. And my sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the raising of the Lord of God's name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Lord, in reverent service, we place these gifts upon your altar, receive them into your sight, and make them the sacrament of our redemption. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through the mystery of his cross and resurrection, he freed us from the yoke of sin and death and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart to proclaim your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. So with angels, archangels, 
of all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending chorus of praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. In communion with the whole church, we have assembled on this day, which you have made holy and rejoicing that you made us a new creation. In your risen son, we pray. Make holy these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the snowfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and faithful. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In Christ, we've received the spirit of adoption. And so as sons and daughters of God, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, please look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be there. May the body of Christ bring us and all our loved ones to life everlasting.
and let us pray. Nourished with the sacrament of our redemption, we ask you, Lord, that by its saving power, true faith may always grow and prosper. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Go forth in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint. Support the weak. Help the suffering and the lonely. Honor all men and women. Rejoice in the power of the sacred heart. The Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Amen. Amen.